So right at the peak of the coronavirus outbreak, I'm returning to China. So before you start blaming me of being crazy and being completely responsible, I have to tell you there are a few reasons why I need to return. One of them is that my job is there. My job is about creating communities and nurturing them. And this is the moment that I have to be there. I need to be there close to them. China is the place where my life is. My bank accounts are. My apartment is. My clothing is there. My two cats are there. They are being taken care of by amazing cat sitters. But still, I need to be close to them. You know, I need to take care of them. Never abandon your animal. I've also been listening to the news and apparently the situation is chaotic and there's nobody in the streets. It's like a, a scenario of walking dead, nobody in the streets. In reality, I speak with my friends that are still there and they say that everything is pretty normal. I mean, it's less crowded, but subways are running, there are taxis everywhere. And, and anybody that has lived in China for a while, they will understand this better. If there is a country in the world able to stop this virus in its tracks, that country is China. I'm not taking any political stance with this, but I'm letting you know that China is able to implement measures overnight. They can close a city down. They can de determine that the community needs to go through health checks in specific locations and they can implement that in a flash. So I'm pretty certain that the government in China is taking all possible measures faster than anybody else in the world to be able to contain this virus. And if you start comparing what happened in 2009 with the H1N1 virus, you know, the whole world took two Took about six months to react to a deadly virus that actually had a death toll much higher than the coronavirus had now. I don't want to sim oversimplify it, but yes, I think China is pretty well prepared. And also, if you think about the dimension of China, 30,000 cases in a nation of billions, it's a very small drop in the ocean. Again, I'm not taking any political stance, but I think there's an unjust attack. Of course, you're going to say, well, but they have unsanitary locations like the wet markets. And yes, those are things that need to be taken care of in the future. Right now they're all closed and, and people are taking the necessary measures and they, they are taking precautions. People, they are taking extra measures not to contaminate anybody else and not to transmit this disease. I've been tracking all the information about the disease that I can and, and apparently those reports, those early reports that the disease can be transmitted even while asymptomatic, those are lies. Don't be mad at me for going. I'm not placing myself in peril. I'm going back there because that's where I live. And, and now today is my last day in Portugal. I, I've been here for the last three weeks. I, I spent Chinese New Year here with, with my wife and family and we enjoyed every minute, minute of it and now it's time to go back. I managed to get an Air China flight directly to Shanghai. I'll try to keep you updated as much as I can. I'll try to, you know that I don't do daily vlogs. At most I can do a monthly vlog. I don't have time for that. I'll try my best to keep you updated uh, about what's happening in China. I'll try to, every two days, I'll try to put out a vlog of my daily life in China, how things are have been changing i hope you enjoy it but today is my last day in portugal so i'm going to try to enjoy a little bit of sunshine before jumping on a plane tomorrow heading back to china and since today is the last day in portugal i will be ordering a francisinha for lunch we're gonna see what it is typical Portuguese dish from Porto actually and this one wasn't the best but I do have a Francesinha restaurant in Shanghai so I'll probably go there soon to show you how it is. It's basically a croque monsieur, a lot of meat, two pieces of bread covered with sauce and surrounded by fries. So one of the tough things about living abroad is that you're not usually at home for important moments. My granny's birthday is gonna happen Next week, she's gonna be 93. So we're gonna buy some party stuff for her. I'm not gonna be here, but at least I can make her day a little special. ready to board. I'll have a quick flight to Frankfurt and after that I think I have one hour transfer and then I should jump into an Air China flight. I'll probably drop this video while I'm at Fra in Frankfurt if I have enough time 
and I'll catch up with you in my next video. Cheers.